So we're here at the Giza Plateau for the first time for me since 2012. So I'm just delighted to be here with the Resonance Science Foundation, Nassim Haraman, Jamie Janover, and the whole crew. And so we're gonna get a real chance on this trip to actually explore the pyramids inside and out. So I'm really excited by this, what's gonna happen here. And just behind me here, you can just see the pyramids. <laughs> absolutely they're so big behind me is the great pyramid and over in that direction we have the second pyramid but today we're going to just look at the great pyramid that's almost polished isn't it yeah god look at that that is a good example yeah. the the ape the ape the apex of the pyramid is one quarter of an inch off the base, which is 13 acres. Okay, so so you place two million three hundred thousand stone, and by the time you're done, you're a quarter and a half. You might have been perfect when you built it, but now you know it's a quarter of an inch off, right? like thousands of years later. So the pyramids are not four faces, they're, they're eight faces and I think from this angle you kind of can see it, okay, at this time. You can see that it dips in in the middle and, um, and uh, during the autumn equinox and the spring equinox, um, viewed from above, when the sun rises, you can see very clearly the eight faces that the pyramid makes. Um, and and so that was right? only a few days yeah. ago. Indented. Yeah, there's an indent. So it goes in and then back out. Yeah. Oh. And it's very precise actually when you sit from here, it doesn't look precise, but when you sit from above, it's very precise delinea Shadow. delineation between the two faces. And it might have been, I actually, I, there's a lot of theory, but I actually think that it's, um, it's structural. It's for structural reasons. When the casing stones, like when it dips in inside like that, the casing stones can weigh on each other in the middle. They can, you know, lean on each other in the middle. So that, I think that might be why it was done that way. But it's remarkable that the thing is aligned and done that way in such a way that on the equinoxes it becomes visible. And, it, and you're talking about like this guy on this corner going to this guy on yeah. the other corner yeah, going, yeah. dude, your block is like five, <laughs> you know, tenth of an inch of an too inch. far left. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> really? Right? The other thing is that the thing is completely level, right? So you have to start with an amazing, so because you got to keep moving so that you get the right angles all the way through, right? <laughs> so, so this is it's very amazing. And I think there's a variation of, what is it, 20 centimeters or a little bit more, maybe? Uh, what? Uh, between the sides. The, 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 vari the variation, not the level, oh. but the variation in yes. length, oh, right? Is only like a few centimeters, right? I can't remember how many. The largest sense um, uh, stone on on the planet. So you, you got this huge uh, plate, and then you got this huge building, very heavy building, on it, oscillating, resonating, and, and you, so the the whole thing is like a big tuning fork, right? And then at the entrance of the temple, you got these huge uh, obelisks, you know, like tuning forks, sitting on the stuff. And so the, the material you're using is very critical to tuning the resonant frequency of the whole thing, right? And, and so, you, and, and it's highly engineered. And, um, and you can see, um, you know, even the, the way the blocks are carved and the, that, that they're all not the same size and they're all in different. So this would be like, I mean, in engineering, if you're very advanced, you would be calculating how the waveforms propagate through the system based on the shape that you're using and how it's going to create and what and you, you you're going to cut corners you're going to do a few things to like tune the whole thing so that eventually you get like this 
high resonance like harmonic relationship of all the buildings together right and and you get that sense when you walk around these complex when you rock around the temples and you and I, I mean this is really interesting because okay you got basalt but um, but you have a lot are we going to go through some of the evidence of advanced tooling is actually found on this uh, on these stones I think there's one piece right there so everybody if you look at this piece here okay I look I don't have change right now that's why I didn't want you to do it you're wasting your time so so you can see right this kind of uh, surfacing okay where you can see there must have been a blade in here you can see like a, a, the, the thickness you can see the thickness of the blade right and look how smooth that is you can see the striation from the the cutting right and the thickness of the blade okay so um so this here um you know you don't expect that because so obvious. Uh, these these people were supposed to have uh, copper chisel only, <laughs> right? Copper chisel and hammers, right? So, so how do you get this? All right, well, uh, you don't, and and you and you see it here on basalt. Which what is the hardness of basalt? Um, very it, 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 <laughs> very it, yeah, it's fairly hard. It, it, what is it? Six it's on the scale? It's, I think it's six point four. Or okay. 6 .5. Yeah. So so you know, diamond is is ten. Okay the hardest right um granite is like seven seven something seven point two seven point two and then so this is still very hard stone like but copper doesn't do it right it doesn't i think if we go to the other corner yeah the read is almost mine you're yeah and there's statues you're right. yeah we have a statue so of the King Kefren at the Egyptian Museum, that you can't cut it with anything except of diamond. Well, yeah, yeah they, uh, the only thing harder is diamond to yeah. cut it, all right? Um, let's go to this corner. If we go to the other corner, there's another example of advanced tooling that is even more challenging to explain. So you can see, there's one here, one here, right? So this is a perfect, Cut, you can see, you know, like a saw, you know, like a diamond saw type of thing, <laughs> power tool, right? Um, far from like copper chisel, like far from copper chisel. I think one of the most important things to realize about being here on the Giza Plateau is the similarity in style we find with um, Peru specifically and other places around the world. But Peru is the most intriguing because everything I'm seeing here, every time I come here, you just see the similarities in with the polygonal stonework, the way they cut and shape stone, just the style of everything, just the, the mastery and precision. And you can see why um, people believe and I, I kind of must I'm starting to believe this now is that the same people may have been involved in this construction or certainly the same teachers of you know the architect teachers who then traveled around the world so this is just just amazing <laughs>